Well, that brings us to the close of the technical sessions. But, like I said yesterday, the much-awaited part two of the 12th Excellence Awards and Recognition is now going to be played out. I request Rakesh Sinha to please come up. Very good evening. I know it's a little fag end of the day. Uh, quite, quite tiring, quite exhaustive. We are all exhausted. Uh, but I know there's a, something on the other side of this uh, fatigue, which is all about excitement and celebration, which is all waiting for us. Uh, with the, uh, the part two of the Excellence Awards to be announced now. Uh, the part one we had yesterday. And um, can I have the uh, slide with the <coughs> jury panel names on the screen, please? I think yesterday we had a great opportunity to have uh, a couple of jury members here in person as well as virtually joining from a different locations. They're all based at a different location. Um, the jury, is, you can see they're represented by Mr. V. B. Ranganathan, who is the chairman of the jury, and he also uh, is the chairman of audit committees. He happens to be on the arbitration for many of the government committees. Uh, he is on the board of many private listed organizations, he mentors, promoters, as well as he also uh, provides a lot of social impact work and, and groom entrepreneurs. He is a former EY, a senior partner EY. Ram S. Ram Sundar, uh, uh, he is a, a foreign, former partner like Alexander Hughes. He was with Electrolux in a business role. He was with Pepsi as a business role. He was a CFO with Rand Maxi, uh, a seasoned business leader. And post his 70 years of age, he thought of getting into a new league of education. He, he did his LLB and now he's doing LLM and he wants to get into further uh, interesting corporate role. Uh, we had Chandrasekhar Tyagarajan. Chandrasekhar Chandru, as we call him, he has been uh, with companies like IBM and uh, Birla Soft and CFO roles. Uh, in the current role, he is with Greaves, which is EV, uh, the new age electric vehicle organization. Uh, Vikram Tandon. Vikram Tandon is a group CHRO Adani uh, and he is an ex HR head of HSBC. Uh, Urs Ulrich Kajenstian. Uh, Mr. Urs Ulrich is based out of Basel, Switzerland. Uh, he's a uh, former head of IT for Metro and he was also the MD of Global Business Solutions Metro. He was the head of IT for Bell Foods, one of the largest meat processing firm in Switzerland. And uh, uh, right now, he is based out of Switzerland, as I mentioned. Uh, I think so. oh, Urs is there, uh, virtually joined in. Very nice. Good afternoon, Urs. Thank you. Uh, I know we had uh, all of you yesterday evening. Just to complete the names, can we have the slide back for a minute? Yeah. Mr. Ranjeev Loda is the uh, uh, former executive director and CFO for Utamaki. It's a Helsinki headquartered company. Uh, in previous roles with Tata Group, Tata Chemicals. Uh, Raghav Rao is a, a veteran investment banker, GCC guy himself. Uh, in last role, he was with Deutsche Bank as a CEO for them. Now, as the process was shared yesterday by some of the uh, jury members, uh, it was a very rigorous process. And as, all, as always in all the years, what we do is we receive nominations and applications. There is a structured application form. Organizations for the company awards, we receive the filled in application forms. And there's a scoring criteria which is identified along with that. That scoring criteria and the application form all kept on a secured folder accessed through password is provided to all these jury panel members. Unlike many other forums and events where they just do a cursory look, here the jury member individually look at each of the applications and they are required to score. And what we have experienced is they have a divergent view sometimes where one of the jury will believe a matured organizations and if they are not doing something 
you know, phenomenally well in the last few years. They believe it is like, you know, going slow. Somebody believes it is better because they are going, you know, stable and so on and so forth. So we literally had a divergent view and you can see a jury of that caliber, which is, you know, uh, will have their own kind of a perspectives and views. So we had a s individual scoring, it was compiled and they deliberated on the comparative scoring as well and then they finally confirmed to say, okay, these organization needs to be, you know, uh, awarded. They also made a mention that by saying few of the application interestingly came out very well. Having said that, you know, it could be like, you know, uh, they could have articulated some of the points better. So one of the perspective was shared even yesterday evening when I think even Ranjeev was talking about or even Raghu was talking about that it could be better. Maybe sometimes we might be doing it, but how are we presenting is also important. In fact, some of the jury members, by just to give you another anecdote, is they, they sometimes reach out to the corporate leaders themselves, not to, to announce what they are doing, but because they know that organizations, they will provide a view by saying, okay, hey, this company is doing well, this company is not doing well. So some of the foreign seekers, in language of uh, Mr. V.B. Ranganathan, uh, is fondly called Ranga, he will say, you know, have you done a forensic audit on the company? While that company's shared services may be doing fine, but what about that company itself? So some of that also, so you can see sometimes uh, it, it seems too, uh, uh, too, too tough, but that is what uh, SSF stands for. And that's why the SSF awards are something which I know all of you keep looking forward to. Uh, I, as you all are aware, uh, SSF uh, uh, as a process don't charge a single penny for, for any award application. So this is all done by pro bono by the jury members with all that fairness and giving back to the industry and shaping back the industry. So a round of applause for all the jury members. They're not here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I have one of the jury members, Urs, joining from Basel, Switzerland. Can I have in the screen, please? Urs, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, just one, one, two words. Yesterday we had to be taking one more about the companies and today we're talking more about the uh, specific projects or specific topics, functions. And I was again also, I said it yesterday, very impressed about the work uh, the colleagues are, uh, are doing. Um, one thing was for, for, for me a bit more difficult, I guess for, for the colleagues as well, we had afterwards we had a bit of discussion, the, that uh, sometimes more metrics would be good, you know, where you can then uh, uh, better compare or better make yourself a picture of the success of the projects, uh, how they were. But also, if you, if you look at, we have different um, uh, functions to look at, uh, HR, uh, digital transformation and so on. Each of the uh, um, um, uh, parts were very interesting projects and I was so impressed uh, to read about this, and I also, I must say, I also learned quite a bit of what, what is capable from all the participants. And so, congratulations to everybody who joined in, and thank you very much for giving us this insight. Thanks, thanks, Urs, uh, uh, for sharing the perspective and also joining your afternoon. Uh, really appreciate you were pretty much there yesterday as well, so really appreciate that. Uh, to continue with the awards evening, I'll request a couple of my uh, SSF colleagues to join me on the stage. Can I request uh, Ravi Ramakrishnan to join me on the stage? I'll also request Anand Maheshwari if you can join on the stage. We were actually uh, expecting another uh, guest to be with us. I think given the Bangalore traffic, we don't know how long he will take, so we thought we should continue with the process. Uh, uh, we were expecting one of the uh, ADGP to join us here, so we'll wait for uh, you know, if he comes in between, great, otherwise we'll not uh, wait and we'll just continue with the process, that's what we're doing. Can I have another mic, please? So I think uh, another thing I wanted to share with all of us is that besides company awards, we also have, a, you know, an approach for the last few years is about recognizing some of the leaders as well who have done fairly well for this industry. And the way we look at the leaders in two different categories, this year we are going with only one category. One category is more about pioneering leaders who have done something 20 years ago, they have built that industry, etc. Uh, there are two leaders who are in the industry today and they are shaping this industry. 
not just about in their current role. So when we talk about leaders, it's not about their current role or an organization, it's about their journey where they have done terrific job of doing something um, you know, for their organization, for the industry, as well as contributing back to the society by building that kind of an industry. That's how we look at the industry. So we'll start with uh, the award. This is for the company awards first. This is, there's a two categories all you know. There's a category one and a category two. Uh, category one, we, we announced the awards yesterday. This is for the category two, where we have subcategories. So over to you, Anand, for announcing the first one. So the, hello, yeah. So the one I have in hand, and I have not yet opened it, it is for delivering business impact through innovative people practices. So on the excellence on innovation in people practices and lo and behold, the award goes to Unilever, UniOps. Congratulations to Unilever, Uniops team. I think uh, I think they, they were they were here today sometime, but they we missed to have him here. We'll we'll ensure that trophy reaches them. Uh, we can just show the trophy to trophy to all of us. And you can read the citation on Citation says 12th Annual Global Enterprise Services Excellence Awards, delivering business impact through innovative people practices to Unilever, UniOps, Bangalore, December 23. Once again, round of applause to you. We'll move to the next category and request Ravi to do the honors, please. So this award is for delivering business impact through effective digital transformation. Very apt for today. This is for India. The category is for the category two India and that goes to Hindustan Coca-Cola. Anyone from the team would like to say a few words? Uh, firstly, thank you so much SSF for this uh, recognition. I think it helps us realize we are doing the right thing at the right speed. 
second, I think this award is a testament to uh, how over time us, we all at Shared Services have evolved to be citizen innovators or citizen incubators, I would say, right? I mean, when 2017, when our first spot went live, uh, you know, it, it imbibed a sense of the art of possible and how everybody in the shared service started giving ideas and from there on, there was no stopping, right? And we've just flown with brilliant ideas and I think, I think uh, kudos to the way we've evolved this positive change management on our digital journey. So thanks once again. Thank you. So we'll move to the next category. Uh, this is the, for the international, the digital transformation. The category is the same, delivering business impact through effective digital transformation but in a global environment. And this goes to EY GDS Enablement Services. Coca-Cola said, uh, this is uh, much appreciated and uh, we worked hard for the kind of credentials we have. Uh, even in the panel that I was speaking about, there is a lot that is happening in this industry and within that all of us are really pushing the needle in terms of what's the possibility related to new technologies. So not only we are doing it for ourselves now, we are doing it for our parent organizations, and that's what I see the future to be. Thank you. Let's go to the next category. Well, you can do the honors. innovation and excellence in process. What goes to TML Business Services? Tata Motors. I would like to thank SSF for recognizing this. Uh, yes, 
I could remember those days in 2013 when I first came on this forum and was just ha having a speaker invite. Uh, this is the fourth one for us by the forum. We get our, uh, we got it in 2014, 16, and 19. So thanks. Uh, credit goes to my entire team. Okay, and uh, yes, lots more to come. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, Tata Motors team. It's fantastic. Thank you. So the special guest we await is Shri Umesh Kumar, IPS, uh, Additional Director General of Police, Crime and Technical Services, Bengaluru. Shri Umesh Kumar joined as ASP of the communally sensitive and highly industrialized Penambur subdivision, DK district, in 1998. After promotion, uh, he was appointed SP, Superintendent of Police, Kodagu district, and he used his experience as Commandant of KSRP Battalion to streamline the structure and deployment procedure of DAR Kodaku district. He made sincere efforts to improve the police-public relationship by organizing national level hockey tournaments and training for kith and kin of police personnel for gainful employment. He was selected to serve the UN peacekeeping mission Kosovo for one year he was posted as SP Bidar district, where he curbed the nefarious activities and movement of interstate criminals from Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. He then served as SP Chitradurk district, curbing again Naxalites movements. He was successful in developing excellent police public relationship by organizing various rural sports activities and employment rallies. <coughs> In 2006, he went on to becoming the interstate deputation, it took on the interstate deputation to Bihar as SP Bhojpur. Then as SP C1 district, his proactive role in judicial trials against notorious criminals having interstate and international links resulted in their conviction. As SP East Champaran district of Motihari, bordering Nepal and Karmabhumi of Mahatma Gandhi, he arrested many important Naxals, carrying an award by making special efforts. The General Assembly election 2010 was conducted peacefully under him. <clears throat> On promotion as DIGP Champaran, he succeeded in curbing the movement of criminals across the Indo-Nepal international border, In 2006, he went on to a deputation to Bihar state and as SP Bhojpur, he was successful in detecting various sens sensational crimes such as kidnapping, murder, the coity, etc. As SP East Champaran, I think I read that, as DIGP CID Bihar, he established the first cyber police station of Bihar police. After the general parliament election, he was posted as DIGP Magad Range, Gaya. His contribution in the arrest of high-rank Naksa leaders such as Jagdish Master and others intensified operations against the Naksals and this was highly appreciated. He was instrumental in bringing peace in Rotas district from Naksal activities curbing unhindered Naxal activities in Jharkhand state bordering southern districts of Bihar. His efforts were recognized by giving him the DG CRPF commendation disc three times and he was awarded the President's Police Medal for meritorious service in the year 2013. After returning to Karnataka state, he was posted as IGP Belgaum Range after a brief stint as additional CP administration, Bangalore City Police. He handled many farmer agitations, 
administrative matters efficiently and effectively. The Kalasa Banduri agitation, which was very, which was an emotional issue for farmers, remained peaceful during his tenure. Later on, he was posted as IGP, <coughs> IGP headquarters and IGP administration at police headquarters and was holding additional charge as IGP, PNM, DIGP headquarters too. Okay. <coughs> On the 5th of August 2020, he was posted as ADG of Police, Economic Offences, CID Bengaluru, along with the additional charge of additional Director General of Police, CID, and police uh, in the police computer wing, he has improved the status of police IT at the national level. He has implemented many new ideas in the field of IT in the police department. He has played a major role in planning and development of new version of police IT. He has also worked as ADGP administration Bengaluru and presently he is holding the post of additional director general of police Crime and Technical Services, Karnataka, since the 8th of June, 2023. So we await the arrival of this great officer of the government of India. Taking the opportunity to say on the behalf of even the citizens as well, I think the officers like you really make us sleep well. Thank you for all that what you do. Really appreciate, sir. Thank you. And I'll request if you can speak for a quick couple of minutes. And then we have one quick awards to announce. Or what we can do is, if you're comfortable, we have an award to announce. We can announce that award, bring the lead, and then we'll request to talk on the something on the economy conference for sure. So we'll bring the award. Can I have the award and the announcement to do, please? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you would have heard from his illustrious uh, career uh, graph that uh, Sangeeta was reading about, and I had opportunity to spend a few minutes with him. Uh, and today's headlines also in the Times of India and all that about cyber crime and all that. So that has been his special uh, ex areas of exposure and more from a practical point of view. So we will uh, request him to say a couple of words about his experiences on that also after giving the word. Okay. I am fortunate enough to announce this award. BPM Achiever in Global India. Mr. Piranjan Jha. This award is being presented to Mr. Piranjan Jha in recognition of stellar contribution in a transformational a strategic leadership and operational role in global India delivering value and business impact. So nice of you, all the best. Congratulations. Heartiest congratulation, Pranjan. Uh, we request you if you can speak few words before uh, uh, we just complete the award session. So first of all, thank you so much. Uh, I'm happy to receive this award from you, and thank you SSF. Thank you the eminent jury who really thought me deserving of this award. Uh, Twenty years back, when I started in this industry, I never thought I'll get an award for my job. Uh, <laughs> but I get inspired by the opportunity to create terrific careers for our countrymen and now in my role uh, for people from many different countries uh, to create economic opportunities for our communities but also for creating impact in the companies that I work with. So at the end of that journey, uh, if this is an award, this inspires me to do much, much more. So thank you very much. Just a quick line about Pradenjan, I think the kind of journey he had, but I think also what is important is the kind of impact in every role he has played. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to give you a bit of a background about it, I think we actually select the leader after doing a lot of research. And in fact, Jury was really, really struggling to find out 
one of the best and I think that is where Pranjan has come out of that list, topping that list very much unanimously by the jury, by the way. So, congratulations to you. So, I'll request now, sir, if you can just share a few thoughts, it will be great. First of all, I'd like to greet all of you in Kannada. Illarugi Namaskar. I don't know how many of you understand Kannada, but many of them must be from here, Karnataka. I welcome on behalf of the Karnataka state, all the dignitaries, all the businessmen who is coming from the other state. Anyway, as she introduced my, me earlier only, I am from Bihar. So, when I came to Karnataka, certainly I had some hesitation, but after coming to Karnataka, I never feel regret about it. Because such a nice weather in Bangalore and such nice people here. And uh, for working for the last 25 years or so in Karnataka, I get a lot. I have served in Bihar also as must have been done. Now, certainly this is I think the last phase of the entire conference, so all must be willing to leave as early as possible, so I will try to confine myself in 2-3 minutes. And I apologize from my heart that I make you to wait. I had a little a small meeting in the High Court, so you know, judges are the, uh, what do you call, we have to follow their instructions. Now, This is, industry is such a field which I never understand. I am a hardcore policeman, so I know only other language. <laughs> and, uh, particularly this money matters, many times I get confused. I was uh, ADGP EOW economic offense wing also, dealing with many of the economic offenses. But we only have, to, we have the habit of looking into the business from different perspective than the positive perspective, whatever you all have. So, so when I, it's like doctor, when a doctor deals with the patient, he feels that entire world is, when you go to the hospital, you feel the entire world is sick, isn't it? But uh, if you come outside, you'll find, find that many of the people are not sick, very few are sick. Similarly, when you deal from the police angle side, you feel that everything is wrong. It's nothing like that. And meeting with seeing such a dignitaries here who are expert in their field. Now, just coming to what subject he has, uh, I've been asked to deliver upon, and since it has come in times of India now, in fact, I'd just like to introduce one statistics to you. Now, the nature of crime from the policing angle also, it has changed drastically into the last 5-10 years. Earlier, when the emphasis was more on the physical crime like robbery, dakaiti, murder and all, the number of crime in cyber field has is growing day by day in, in, it, in a very fast, fast manner. Just we had one analysis few days back only. In <coughs> January 2021, the number of percentage of cyber crime in Karnataka, I am only talking about, was hardly 3% of the total crime registered in the Karnataka. And today, it is 11%. For example, if there if the 1 lakh case is registered, so 11,000 case belongs to only cyber crime. Just you can imagine the extent of the crime and the speed with which it is increasing. The problem with our investigative agencies are, we are little slow in incorporating or changing ourselves or training our men because you know the quality of knowledge required, quality of technical knowledge required for investigating such type of cyber crime is very very huge and uh, many times it becomes very complex and moreover it involves the internal uh, involves the international players also like many times the servers will live in the in foreign country this bitcoin we are investigating one case now it is very difficult to get the server the, uh, is cooperation from the other agency from the international body like uh, if, if it is an outside country very difficult to get we talk about interpol and all these things but take it granted from me Hardly 5%, not even 5% will be responded by the other agencies. And they are not bothered about also. Only thing if it is in India, we can do something. Lot of things are being done also to, uh, to uh, prevent this one. I don't know how many of you know 1930, dial 1930. 
very few but please note it down whenever you at personal level if have some you face some cyber crime or fraud immediately dial that one the, and your entire money will be blocked even if it is but as soon as you uh, this one uh, report that one to the dial 11930 the money will be blocked if you delay it it will be transferred from one one bank to other bank to other bank and it will be difficult to track that one in fact we have blocked more than 8 crore rupees in the in this year only out of 80 crore something whatever involved in the cyber crime because of this facility only this is central government central government facility so whenever you feel like that you are subjected to any cyber crime please dial 1930 and you also must uh, tell to your employees also educate them also that they should do it this facility is very efficient and quite successful also once the money is blocked then you have chance to get it back again getting back money is the legal process you have to get the court order but at least that can be done nowadays court also is giving orders for returning money back very easily nothing to worry about the court 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 is also modernizing modernizing day by day so it is become easy process never think that the court and all this is very clumsy now in fact uh, uh, all the eight crores uh, many many in many cases we have returned money in one month only the moment they apply to the court they give the order there is not an issue there is one thing regarding this uh, <coughs> economic offence also because most of times money is involved you might be subjected to any of the this one what you called uh, uh, offence by your own staff your own partners or somebody the problem is in tracking the money and once you register case the investigation now the economic offences are so complex so complex we required to have auditors many times you don't get the proper audited accounts also that creates problem for us so if your accounts are audited properly then it is easier to get the evidences which will be useful in the court trial this this we find in many cases as well dealing with the economic offence in many cases where law crores of rupees are involved but audit was not done where to get the evidence see police is just like what you call uh, uh brahmas type if you come to police then first thing what you do in in, in during investigation is you block the account so before this one you just see you explore your this one uh, whatever avenues are there because once we block the account the entire transaction will stop this is usual requirement for the investigation so many times you have to understand what is the nuances of investigation what will happen in the court so which will which should not affect you in the future although i am what i am talking is a very negative thing which many times i feel you all talk in a very positive positive way how where to get the investment where to get the employment where to get the benefit profit but my only request is in a, in a first to make maximum profit don't get into trap of the any unknown person whose identity identity could not be verified <coughs> nowadays people are making fake uh, aadhar card also so if suppose if you come across any aadhar fake aadhar card aadhar card can be verified with the help of the bank or somebody or uh, even you can have the verified one more thing like in all those who are in karnataka i don't know uh, this one we have made a facility whomever you are employing you can have online verification of the antecedent of the person you need not to go to the police station but many people are not aware i think you can tell your hr whomever you employ you can get the police verification done online just by paying 10 rupees online group verification also be, can be done so whenever you employ somebody from outside also or whoever even from karnataka also even from bihar also if you employ them here the criminal data network the, that is called icjs is so efficient that i can verify the one uh, one uh, this one person antecedent even if he is staying in assam the database is all integrated so please verify all the antecedents of your employee whom you are going to employ because many times the workers will be employed some you don't know about the antecedent and suppose if he is involved in some criminal event criminal uh, uh, this one uh, activity in his native place 
and later on if the police come to know that he is working in your area, certainly you will not be accused in that case, but you will be facing some, uh, some harsh, what you call action by the police or by questioning by the police. They will not harass you, but at least questioning. Many times that feels like why I am getting uh, such type of harassment. So that sort of small things are there. Anyway, you all are very well aware. And nowadays, even the children also have the, so much idea about this, uh, what you call technology. You are much more ahead of them. Them. Rather, I would like to learn from all of you. If anybody is here to guide us in any of the technology, technical, technical thing, I will welcome them. I am ADG Crime, so I can very well take your services. But only thing we are not going to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We will take you. I will take your services as in what you call uh, uh, social, what the term is there? Eh? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so we, we welcome all those who are ready to serve us or help us in handling with the crimes in the society, not only that one. See, one thing, the biggest advantage, I am from Bihar. Anybody from Bihar here? Okay, you yourself. Thank you. The biggest advantage in Karnataka is the law and order. This is the one thing where, which cannot be quantified in money. And I am sure you all will be appreciating that because of this factor, many of the industries are coming to Karnataka. It's not only weather, but the law and order also is very well maintained. And there may be some, uh, this one, uh, bad elements in our police also. But by and large, I have found that in the, even all the part of Karnataka, the police is quite cooperative, helpful. Feel free in contacting us. If you feel somewhere problem at the down level, then go to the SPs. All the SPs are quite educated here and uh, cordial also. So they will help you out. And we like to have your industry flourish because the more you flourish, the more uh, this one, uh, what you call, uh, uh, lively condi like condition will improve in Karnataka and will further go ahead. So I congratulate all those who have received the award. I am sorry again for delaying, delaying and delaying coming here. And uh, I congratulate all of you and all the best for your endeavor in the future. Do well and help us also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Umeshji. It was worth the wait. We waited for you and it was all worth it to learn so much from uh, you. I'd like to request uh, Anand Maheshwari and uh, Rakesh both to come and give a small memento from our side as a mark of our gratitude for your presence here, sir. group photograph here, I request uh, all the award winners, if you are here, you want to take a couple of winners to take your photograph with your trophies, please go ahead first. So all the award, so all award winners can come here. All the winners with their trophies can come here. In fact, I feel it is better that all of us come first here, then the award winners can keep taking their time to do whatever they want to do main thing, right? So all of us can come here first, let's do, let's do that. All of us please come here. Thank you.